Let's talk about exercising with bicuspid aortic valve. Nothing I say on this channel is medical advice, but I do want to sit here and actually talk about exercise for a second. Um, there's lots of videos out there that, uh, there's a few videos out there I should say, uh, that talk about exercising with high blood pressure. We can model that form of exercise with bicuspid aortic valve. First of all, if you have a bicuspid aortic valve, cardio is a necessity. Look, I got a, got a bike right here. Um, you know, it's winter time. Um, I'm a big pansy. I don't want to be out there running all the time. Um, although getting out into the elements is also very important for your body. Two, you need to ex experience the planet in real time because your body is supposed to be living in tune with the planet in real time. Uh, our, you know, the furnace is going over there. That's gas from some other weird place, uh, which is polluting the atmosphere. Uh, I, you know, we're polluting our bodies through comfort. We're polluting the planet through comfort. We must be out there pushing ourselves to be experiment, experiencing life in real time. Um, first of all, um, same with the sun. You need the sun giving your body vitamin D in real time instead of just taking supplements. You know what I mean? So um, our, our desire for cheap energy often leaves us to being comfortable. You must exercise. Um, and cardio is most definitely part of that. Pushing yourself too hard in cardio can wear down your heart valves. Um, my neighbor, my neighbor Linda, um, she's uh, a sweet elderly woman. She used to do marathons and all this stuff. She ruined her heart valves by pushing too hard. By pushing too hard. Um, you have to find the balance. Um, she's fine. But um, the... Uh, the, because of a lot of uh, surgeries and stuff like that, but um, the, uh, you know, so bitch can't push, can't push yourself not enough. You know, you have to actively be consciously exercising your body where you know that it's going to be impacting your heart for the better. Um, find a routine that fits with you, F fitting it into your schedule in general. Let's talk about weight training. Weight training. Uh, oh, actually, real quick on cardio, there's two different types of cardio. High-intensity interval training, HIIT workouts, versus low-intensity cardio, which is like a bike ride. High-intensity is like lots of quick movement, shorter time. Low-intensity is longer time, easier movement. Pick what works for you, or in the particular day. Let's talk about weight training, and more importantly, calisthenics. Calisthenics is body weight training. A lot, it has its own art form to it. There's a lot of isometric holds, meaning like, like a plank where you're just staying at one spot and you're pressing the body. It's kind of a mixed bag here because doing a exercise where two joints are moving is better than an isolated hold in the sense that it can raise your blood pressure. The thing that I like about calisthenics is that it focuses on a deeper sense of strength. A deeper sense of strength that makes your muscles stronger, like, at their core. As opposed to weight training, which is kind of like blowing them up with air in a weird way. As opposed to filling them up with sand. Sand has a denser to, density to it. That's calisthenics we still have to be conscious of the fact that your particular body may not be able to handle, depending on where your aortic valve is at, may not be able to handle those types of isometric holds or, or weight training in general. It depends on where you're at. Obviously, diet impacts the way that you're capable of moving your body. If you're drinking beer or eating too much bread, your joints are going to suffer and all this stuff. So what you eat impacts how your body moves how much water you're drinking, all of these things. So diet and exercise always go together. I struggle with these things too. I would like to make the argument that it is very good for you to just be physically active. Of course you shouldn't be overdoing it and you shouldn't be doing way too much weight. You need to do lower weights. But you have to, f I mean, no, now that I've been a little bit more involved in calisthenics, and I'm not an expert in calisthenics, I'm still flabby and whatnot and whatever, but 
the strength aspect of it is so much more important than how much weight you can lift. Are you, you know, having a real strong density to your grip, to your, all the joints, all around the joints, every single muscle is arguably way more important than being able to lift a ton of weight or to be at the gym and trying to emulate bodybuilders who are focused on just physique. It's not just about physique, it's about strength, real strength. And that can be improved by doing isometric holds, by doing high quantity reps of push-ups, of various other exercises. So I highly recommend when it comes to the exercise front, not only are you ensuring that you're doing your cardio, but you're doing types of exercises that really will push you to have strength real strength because even weight training and even calisthenics strengthen your heart even if you're not instead of cardio and that's where cardio and strength training really interplay with each other if the rest of your body is really strong when you go to run it's much easier on your heart to strengthen itself if your heart is strong when you go to weight train it becomes easier on your body to get strong uh, the other muscles to get strong so you have to ex- make make sure that, you know when you're in the gym and you're exercising parts of your body you know again the heart is a muscle so you have to cardio is the exercise for that particular muscle and that is arguably one of the most important muscles for you to be exercising in conjunction with the rest of your body if you're aiming to have a strong and good looking physique relative to your body so get in the gym, get hot, <laughs> and also eat well, and um, do what makes sense for your body. Work with doctors and nutritionists as you need to. Um, but don't be afraid of exercise because you think that it may inherently ruin your bicuspid aortic valve. Because there are the horror stories of there, there being things that get ripped and, and you know, it, it depends on where you're at. So evaluate where you're at. And figure out what you got to do. I've seen those people in the forums on Facebook who had their heart surgeries and all this stuff. And then they're out doing marathons. And they're doing all this crazy stuff that I could never do, at least in this moment in time. So if they can do it after having surgery, and we're doing it before having surgery also, um, you can get started. (laughs) So don't be afraid to start. Bye.